Learning. My life ain't supposed to be easy, bro. Like, I'm, <laughs> my life is destined to be pretty, like, not tough in terms, like, financially, but, like, I never had shit. Is it because you take route. the longer, harder route? Yeah, for some reason. It's not on purpose. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I just take, I just end up taking the, the, the longer route for shit. You know what I mean? Which pays off better in the long run. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but it's definitely not. Maybe it is on purpose. I don't fucking know. But it's definitely the longer route that I be taking. But what made it different this time? Because I feel like you love this album because you've had more creative control, more freedom to express the music you want. But what, in this case, made it different? Because you still got to play records for Mark Pitch. You still got to play records for Jay-Z. Like, what makes it different this time? Nah, there, there, there's two things to answer. You, it's really two separate answers to that. The first difference is, this is the first time working on an album. You got to point at me all crazy, but it's OK. <laughs> It's the first time that I started from scratch uh, with nothing. I had songs in the stash that I'm like, oh, this is for my second album, this is for my third album, and them songs still exist from before, that original stash I told y'all about. But I told myself, no, I'm starting with nothing. Every song that's going to be on this album is going to be fresh. I'm not leaning on these old songs. So that's the clear difference between that and the first time. The first time I was still trying to get these old songs, like Lost Ones, the reason why Breakdown, that wasn't on, yeah, that yeah. Lost Ones could have been on the warm-up. It could have been on Friday Night Lights. I had it for that long, but there was an importance that I placed on that song. I was like, yo, this shit too important to be putting out for free. Like, let me put this shit on my album. You know what I mean? The second difference is what you just said about Mark Piss and Jay-Z. That was another, not a mistake, but it was, it was a, something else that I did on the first album that I didn't do here. We, these guys have incredible advice. Sometimes you talk to Mark and he got stories for everything, because he was seen it with Big, and he even seen it on the R&B side with Usher, like he got such an ill perspective yeah, yeah. that his advice is incredible. Jay-Z, his advice is amazing. It's wisdom. It ain't even advice. It's pure wisdom flowing out of them. Off the experience. Off the experience. Jay can tell me a story that parallels with mine, like, oh, it's like when I was on tour with DMX, blah, 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 and I'd be like, oh, shit. You really went through the same shit that I'm going through, and it's, it's incredible. The difference is, on the first album, me just being so gas to have a deal, you know what I mean? And like, just, I'm signed to Jay-Z. I wasn't just taking advice, I was looking for approval. You know what I mean? I was, and, and as an artist, that is the worst thing you could ever do, is, is look for the approval of an, another person, let alone another artist, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I feel like I was like always trying, you know what I mean? That's, him, yeah. that's the difference. I just made a song, Jay, this is the one. And yes, the you know what I mean? And yeah. I'll tell that story too. I, I'll, I'll make sure that story is told because there's a song on the album that I'm going to make sure everybody knows the story for before they hear it, you know what I mean? But, but that's the difference. Now it's like I go to Jay-Z for advice because I understand that he has the best advice and the best wisdom, but at the end of the day, I got to make the decision, you know what I mean? I don't need his approval. If we disagree, we disagree. You know, before it was like, ah, shit, he don't like that line right there. Oh, fuck, what am I going to change the line? You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, 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 as an artist, it can't be like that. So just becoming more aware of that and more confident. What do you think of the speculation? There's always, like, speculation about your relationship with Jay-Z and, you know, you, there's no photos of you guys together. And, like, yeah. all this crazy shit you hear. <laughs> like, these conspiracy theories. And I feel like even when you say, like, yeah. I played the record for Jay and Jay, it's almost like people don't want to believe you. Like, why do you think people are so fascinated by... I don't, yeah, viewpoint of your relationship. With each um, other. I, I'm I'm gonna think it's because we're in a day and age where, look what happened. Drake blew the fuck up, and it's deserved. The man is talented as shit, but in order to help him get him to that level, he had Lil Wayne boom arm around him. You know what I mean? To help the talent that was already there, like show his fan, like look, I got this kid that's crazy, and then even with Big Sean. You got Kanye West on a single, you know what I mean? It's like a, there's a real thing there. And with Jay, it's not there. So people see that, and they're like, oh, Jay don't even fuck with J. Cole. Why I'm going to fuck with J. Cole, you <laughs> know what I mean? <laughs> Nobody puts you on Stars Born. Yeah, of you course. You made nice No, they don't, they don't see. <laughs> but the, we're talking about the people that are saying these things. Yeah. They don't see that. And they don't understand that, yo, this man is a businessman. I'm thankful for the opportunity. If I sign a Jimmy Iovine, I don't want Jimmy Iovine on my videos and on my song. I'm just happy for the deal, <laughs> brother. Like, stay right there. So how can I expect Jay-Z? You know the same for Jay-Z. I'm yeah. just grateful for the, for the, A, for the deal and the opportunity, and B, for the advice and the real 
rooting for me that the people don't see. Like the people don't see that the real but conversation. But you don't care. It's, it's a private thing, so you of don't course, care yes. about the validation of the people nah. into it. If like, that was a point, like, you're, not I, inst- you're not Instagramming yourself in a meeting with him. No. <laughs> Just play, nah, man. Got Jay Z in the studio. I'm over there looking real, like, focused. <laughs> and he's just checking his Blackberry, but I'm like, yo, he's writing the rhyme of the century right now. <laughs> nah, I'm not doing that, man. You know, I don't need uh, the validation. I don't need the world to know. I know. You know what I mean? And you don't have a feature from him on this album. You have no rap features. You have revealed that. There's no yeah, rap features. Yeah. Why? There's nobody rapping on the album. Nobody else rapping on the album other than J. Cole. Say it again. Nobody is rapping on the album. Yes, I've heard it. I know. <laughs> you said what? I've heard it. I oh, know. you heard it. I've heard a yeah. rapper's voice. Can we talk about the rapper's voice? Nah, okay. no, 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 oh, okay, no. Okay. Don't say that. But anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about the rapper's voice? Uh, there's a rapper's voice in there, kids. It's a rapper's voice. Nah, but um, you did reveal that there's no rap features. See, I'm playing by the rules. No rap features, <laughs> but why was that? Is that a like? Cause you had, like you said, you had Chris Tucker, which has two chains on it. You had a song with Jeezy. Did they fit into the scheme? And then later on, you felt you know what? This feels better without any other rappers on there. Like when did that come to be? That that or did those songs just kind of be like, like wow, none of these songs have a feature. Like how did it come to be that? You, is, was that a statement you're trying to make? At all? Oh, I think it is a it is a statement that's being made, but it wasn't that wasn't the intention. It just happened like that. In terms of the Jeezy and Two Chain songs, those were I put those features on after I realized those songs weren't making the album. Okay, you know what I mean. And they they made a strong like Kenny Lofton made has just had a strong chance to make the album. That's on anybody else's album, and it could be on mine too. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it could, it's good enough. You know what I'm saying? It's, but just so happened that it didn't. For what I'm trying to say and and what I'm trying to talk about on Born Center, it just didn't fit. So what happened was the songs that were fitting into the scope of the album, they just didn't have features. And I felt like, why am I going to go force? Like, who's the, who wrote the rule book that says every fucking rap album got to have a feature from another rapper? You know what I mean? I feel like the old way of thinking was, oh, this is going to sell me more records, but I don't believe in that no more. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't believe that if I get, if I get, you know, name a rapper, you know what I mean? If I get him on my song, that his fan is going to buy my album. Nah, people buy albums because they love the artist, not because, you know what I mean? Not because the artist they love is on the song. Now, I just download it, nigga. I'm not going to buy your album. I'm just going to thank you for the verse <laughs> from J. Cole and leave it at that. I'm not buying your whole album. So so I'm just trying. I didn't, I didn't feel like I needed to go the extra mile to get a verse from somebody when I was saying everything that I needed to say. You know what I mean? And you wasn't hustling for other beats, too. It's all you, right? Understand? Yeah. Th- that's one thing I did think it was going to change when I first started. I was like, oh, man, I'll just get beats from other people on this one. But because you had Brian Kidd, you had other yeah. play people help. No ID helped you the first yeah, time. Yeah, but it, it didn't happen. Like I just hit a groove as a as a producer. Like I just can I talk about how good your production is on this on this album? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's I think. Please it's, do. No, because I think the, that <laughs> somebody's got to say it. <laughs> but you know, we we talked about it too. Like the perception of like sometimes, and I think you had told me that Mark Pitt said that to you once also. Like. A lot of times, I remember, obviously, the producer Kanye, and everybody told Kanye, why do you want to rap? You could be one of the greatest producers of all time. Nobody wanted to hear him rap. Yeah. You can't do Jesus Walks. No one's going to play that on the radio. Yeah. And he po- proved everybody wrong. And most times when you're a double threat and you're a rapper producer, you establish yourself as a producer first, and then you become an artist. But yeah. you did it the opposite way. So I feel like you always have this kind of chip on your shoulder that you don't get enough respect as a producer. Yeah, I don't. And I feel like... So what you're talking about with Mark Pitts is he told me from the beginning. This is before like the world found out about me or whatever. He was like, "Yo, dog, I think you need to market yourself." And this is when I'm like, "Market? I'm not marketing. Like, nigga, I'm just gonna put out my music." But I saw what he was. <laughs> I saw what he was saying. He was like, "Yo, maybe you should come out and market yourself as a producer who raps." And I was just like, "Why the Look that fuck face, yo? I need I a gif for that face. Why the <laughs> fuck would I do that?" <laughs> Even though I know that his wisdom is beyond me, and now four years, five years later, I see why he was saying that. Not that I would have did it anyways, but I see why he was saying that. He was saying that because once you market yourself as a producer, like nobody even cares if you could rap. You know what I mean? Like Kanye was a bonus. Like he 
he got better and better as his as career went on because yeah, yeah, yeah. he had something to prove. But even if he didn't, it was like, oh, he's just, I love his beats. The rest is a bonus. And and what happened with me was, I feel like because I rap at the caliber of the same people that, of, you know, I'm just going to sound vain. Because I rap at a very high caliber, people forget that I'm also doing high cal it. High caliber rhymer. People High forgetting caliber. that I actually am doing the beats, or they just yeah. don't even care. And that's why you did the Power Trip video, right? Like you felt like even nowadays yes. people need to see that this I made Power Trip. They got produced it, like it's yes. not just like you'd be surprised how after I did the Power Trip, and, and they was telling me like, "Yo, you need to do a Power Trip production video so they can see how you made." It. I'm like, "Nah, they know. They should know. Like they know, right?" Nah, the minute <laughs> the minute we put out uh, Power Trip production video. I never seen so many like, yo, J. Cole, not only is he my favorite rapper, he's my favorite producer. <laughs> like, <laughs> nigga, you wasn't even saying that before I put out the video. Now you see me touching some keys. I could have been bullshitting and lying. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly I'm your favorite producer. But I, I have made it a point on this album to make sure everybody knows when they hear it, know your list. Like, because I, I, I felt like I wasn't broadcasting enough, and I wasn't self-promoting the fact that I'm doing these beats enough. So now it's like, same way Kanye had to prove himself as a rapper, like, I am the best rapper. You know, I can't it's compete. It's almost the opposite. It's you the opposite. The opposite I have side. to let them know that I really do feel like I'm not better. I'm just as good, sometimes better than a lot of the producers that are producing these. I'm, okay, I'm better than a lot of these producers <laughs> that's making the beats. You know what I mean? But it's funny, because people would criticize some of your beats and say it kind of sounds similar, some of your, your vibes and your tracks. But yeah. if you listen to the production on Born Center, you've grown as a producer. Like, how did you even get better as a producer? Because I'm not satisfied. Like, I'm not satisfied with, I want to grow. I don't want to make the same stuff all the time. You know what I mean? I want to get better. And people doubting me as a producer only pushes it that much further. I'm not like somebody who fan, like, come on, you turn on the radio or listen not even turn the radio, just go on the internet and listen to whoever the hot rapper is or hot producer is. It's like they find this sound. If my shit sound the same, then what the fuck you call this shit? They find this sound <laughs> and they literally, you know what I mean? Every beat damn near could be replaceable. Me, it's like, okay, I want to challenge myself. So I learned from the no IDs. I got in with Danger Hands. I get in with Timberland. I get in, or Pharrell. I get in with people as a rapper and they don't know I'm taking notes as a producer and really just like, like getting your Snoop on? Like yeah, I'm just really <laughs> picking up so many secrets. That's because I'm not satisfied. If you don't think I'm a good producer, then that's just going to motivate me to try to get even better. And enjoy yourself. <laughs> yeah, is that shots right there? Is that shots? But you're not taking it. You're just holding it up. There she go. All right, let's talk about the big yes. thing everyone's excited about, though. With What's your, that? With your light skin brash ass, you said, I'm taking on Kanye. Same date. Oh, man. We're going at it. We're going at it, son. Yeah. It's funny because you're doing it like you said in a very, like, you said it, you expressed why you're doing it in a very intelligent way. And you said, you know, obviously you recognize what he means to your generation. But what do you think it means to your generation, the younger artists that, like, you, you know, you grew up loving Kanye's music, for you to take that challenge on? Do you feel like you're representing a new era and by taking that on and no matter where are you fair with the sales that this is a, t a important cultural moment in hip hop I do I do think I do think it was um I mean I didn't do it for those reasons it was literally such a quick decision that I didn't have time to think about like oh I'm going to do this for the younger generation that nah I'm seeing all <laughs> that now like I'm seeing the importance but it was really just off of my my self self-competitive nature, you know what I mean? So yeah, does it represent? Yes, it does. There's, I was 18 years old, I promise you. I had just graduated high school somehow, and this was before the internet is what it is right now. I just graduated high school, somehow I found Through the Wire video on, um, on, on the internet, and I had already known about Kanye a little bit from like Champions verse or whatever, some verses he had did or whatever, maybe on Blueprint too, and, um, and I seen Through the Wire video, and I was like, my, I watch that video every day. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. you know, it was just it's one of the video. moments from his <laughs> credit. We know clearly. But I was 18 years old. By the time I got to New York, a month into school, there was a Kanye West show at SOBs, which ended up being a legendary show. I yeah. didn't know it at the time. I just was a fan. I was there. So I'm saying all this as a fan. But the same way I was 18 years old, 
watching Kanye like this, like, yo, this nigga's a legend. And I'm doing music at the time, too. And I'm producing my own shit, too. So he's inspiring me, showing me that somebody can do it, producing and rapping. But I'm in the crowd, like, yo, this nigga's a legend. I have to realize, and I'm slowly starting to realize, like, yo, it's a nigga out there that's 17, 18, 19, 20, that's coming to my shows, and I see the way they look. They're doing the same thing, like, oh, yeah. this nigga is a legend. And I'm like, I was just in your fucking shoes, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, in a sense, you're yeah. right. For them to see me do that and make that statement, like, nobody does that. Nobody moves their album. Niggas usually stay as far away from Kanye West as possible, you know yeah. what I mean? I'm pushing my shit to his date. So, to answer your question, I'm sure that inspires the younger, younger generation.